and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy. And as he's allowed us once again to be on this the time side of life and have this blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as always do, I'd like to continue to uh, ask the Lord to bless those persons that are on the staff with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And of course, I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. All right, this evening we're going to forego our prayer list and also our public service announcements. But of course, we uh, will be bringing to you a guest who was one of the speakers from Memphis as we have started the Memphis uh, lectureship rolling for you. So uh, this evening, you're going to be uh, blessed to hear Brother Thomas Hardaway, and he's out of Little Rock, Arkansas, and he'll be bringing to you the word from the Lord. So without any further remarks, Brother Thomas Hardaway. Hardaway. If you have your copy of God's Word, let me invite you to the 24th chapter of the book of Luke. The topic of discussion that has been assigned unto me is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. This story has been told and retold mm -hmm. time and time again. Yeah. And we must continue, continue. to tell this story yes, sir. to the next generation. Uh -huh. But I can't talk about the resurrection well. without talking about the cross. Well, right. Yes, sir. Because were there, if there were no resurrection, no cross, mm -hmm. there would be no resurrection. Amen. Over 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. the determinate council mm -hmm. made a decision mm -hmm. that someone had to come to earth and take on the form of a man. Yes. and live in the flesh as a man. Yes, sir. And the determinate council determined that Jesus mm -hmm. would hang his spiritual coat in the closets of heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that he would step aboard the train of nature yeah. and ride through about 42 generations. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that he would get off somewhere out there in Bethlehem, yeah, yeah. beneath the black bosom of a Palestinian sky, yeah, yeah, yeah. on a rocky road between Hebron and Jerusalem. Yeah. And the Bible helps us to understand mm -hmm. that he was born in a manger. Yeah. He grew up to be a man. Yeah got him some disciples, well. spent some three and a half years mm -hmm. training them, mm -hmm. sent them out two by two, yeah. 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 sent them and told them, mm -hmm. don't go to the Samaritans, uh -huh. don't go mm -hmm. to the Gentiles, oh, she but go wherever. Lost sheep. Lost sheep. To the lost sheep yeah. of the house of Israel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Once they had completed their training, yeah. Jesus had to throw on his head mm -hmm. toward Jerusalem uh -huh. because he had come for one purpose. All right. Mm -hmm. And that one purpose was to die. Yeah, right. He was to be the cycle fisher lamb for the saving of mankind. Yes, 
Yes, sir. But he had an enemy mm -hmm. Talk with you. from the very beginning. Yes. That enemy was the devil yes. who had tried to prevent his birth. Yeah, yeah. You remember down in Egypt. Well, yeah. what happened to that other mic? That <laughs> handheld mic. Yeah, let me, let me have that handheld oh. mic. Man. You remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's better. Yeah. <laughs> down yeah. in Egypt. Uh huh. Uh -huh. There was this great population explosion. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Pharaoh saw that the children of Israel were multiplying rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so he decided that he better do something before they populated Egypt too great. Uh -huh. And you ought to know as a people that Egypt is also our land. Yeah, yeah. It is where Cush went. Uh -huh and had a son by the name of Mazar. And it's referred to as the land of Ham in the book of Psalms and Zephaniah uh -huh. and Jeremiah. And it's referred to in history as the black land, uh -huh. the land from which we got Ekonoka, uh -huh. Himalek, and Esau. Now, we need to know this morning well, that we as a people uh -huh. were among the first. Well, we were not lost in history, no, sir. but we were buried in history. In history. Uh -huh. But because Jesus yeah. got up from the grave, Say it, preacher. we can die and get up also. Uh -huh. Now remember, Pharaoh had issued a bloody decree uh -huh. to the midwives yeah. to kill every boy child yeah. that was born, uh -huh. but save alive the girl child. Mm -hmm. And this was his way of preventing the birth of Jesus so that he could not be the savior of the world. Well, we meet him again in Matthew chapter two, uh -huh. when Herod yeah. had came to the wise men for them to bring him word uh -huh. concerning the birth of this newborn. Yeah. Uh -huh. This was his attempt to prevent the birth of Jesus. Yeah. But if there were no resurrection, well, our message would be meaningless. Yeah. Our faith would be fruitless. Yeah. The Bible would be baseless. Mm -hmm. Heaven would be hopeless. Yeah. The Bible is a book of faith. Yeah. And it contains commands to be obeyed, uh -huh. facts to be believed, yes, sir. and promises to be received. Uh -huh. Thanks be to God Thanks. that he gave us his only begotten son, yeah. that whosoever believeth in him yeah. should not perish, wow. but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord. Thank Before you. there was a resurrection, uh -huh. there was a cry, and this cry came from the Son of God. Yeah. You remember when Jesus had selected his disciples and trained them, that one day he said to them, I go away. Uh -huh. And when he said, I go away, their hearts melted because they had seen someone that they had been with raise the dead. They had seen Jesus Heal blind Bartimaeus. Yes, they had seen Jesus feed 5,000 with two fish mm. and five loaves of bread. Uh -huh. And now he's saying, I go away. Uh -huh. But Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless. I'll pray the Father and he will send you another comforter. That comforter was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So when Jesus thrown his head 
toward Jerusalem, he had to go to Jerusalem by way of Gethsemane's garden. Mm -hmm. And when he got to Gethsemane's garden, John chapter 12 says, he said, now is my soul trouble. In other words, I've been your confidant. Well, I've been there for you when you were in trouble. Uh -huh. When you needed food, I fed you. When you were trouble, I comforted you. But now, now. is my soul trouble. Yes, sir. And what shall I say? Father, deliver me from this hour, for it's to this hour that I came into the world. Yes, sir. And you remember Judas, one of his confidants, had betrayed the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And in Gethsemane's garden, Jesus kneeled down and prayed to the Father. Yeah. And the Bible said that the sweat that fell from him was of great drops of blood. Yeah. And they took my Lord and your Lord. Mm -hmm. When Judas kissed him on the cheek, well. and they carried him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Yeah. And they tore up his garments and said he's guilty of blasphemy. Uh -huh. He's guilty of treason. Mm. And they led him from one courtroom to another. Yeah, yeah. They blindfolded him and beat him mm. to a bloody pup. And finally they put him on the cross yeah, yeah, yeah. out on Gaul, Guthrie's Hill. Yeah. And the cry of cavalry came just before our Lord received Venica Minga with God. Uh -huh. And the Bible said, as he hung there on the cross, yeah. he said, it is finished. Yeah. And the devil thought he said, I am finished. Uh, but that was just the beginning. Yeah. He was not finished. Was he story. was just getting ready yeah. to do what he came to do. Right. That shout rang back against the currents of time uh -huh. to the beginning of man's transgressions and provided the consolation for our sin. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 17. Yeah. Christ blotted out our sin yeah. and he will remember them no more. No more. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the cry and the shout ran forward to the end of ages, yes, carrying the fact that salvation is accomplished. Uh -huh. It descended into the pits of Hades, uh -huh. to the spirits of men in prison, and foretold that Jesus had set the captives free. Uh -huh. Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 10. It ascended up to the throne of God and gladdened the heart of the Father, and the angels rejoiced because salvation had been brought down. Yes, sir. Titus yes. 2, 11 and 12, you, the you. Bible said, the grace of God that bringeth salvation As a had appeared unto all men, Amen. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly love, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Thanks be to God Thank you, that Lord. Jesus went to the cross, yes, sir. but the devil had a banquet he and all of his demonic forces because they were rejoicing that they finally thought they had got Jesus. Well, tell the when story. When they put him on the cross. Oh, yeah. And when Jesus said, it is finished, mm -hmm. these are not the words of one giving up. No, sir. It is not the shout of conquest. Mm -hmm. It is the voice of victory. Yeah. You remember in Joshua chapter 6, when the children of Israel had been promised the city of Jericho, yeah. they had to shout uh -huh. in order to get the city. Well, you remember they had to march around the city one time a day? Yeah. But on the seventh day, they had to march around it seven times. Yeah. And Joshua said, when you march around the city one time a day, be quiet. Now, it's hard for black folk well, to march and be quiet. And be quiet. Yeah. But Joshua said, be quiet, be quiet when you march around the city. Uh -huh. But on the seventh day, uh -huh. he said, march around the city seven times. Yes. And in verse 14, he said, shout, for God have given you the city. Now, some people are too cold to clap. 
well, too sophisticated to shout. Uh -huh. But we need to learn to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Because you don't know what God has done for me if I decide to shout. Yeah. I don't know what God has done for you if you decide to clap. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank the you. The resurrection. Amen. They dragged yes. my Lord and your Lord uh -huh. across those cobblestone streets of Jerusalem. Yeah. Right. Up to the hill of Golgotha. Mm -hmm. go. Where he hung, yes, bled and died yeah. for your sins and for man. Yes, sir. Amen. If there were no resurrection, well, there would be no Church of Christ. Uh -huh. yeah. But because of his death, his dying, uh -huh. and his resurrection, yeah. we have the church. Yes, sir. And there is nothing like the church. Nothing. Although the church is not a fashion show. Well. Displaying the garments of self-righteousness. Uh -huh. It's not a convalescent home where people just sit around and wait to die. The church is not a theater where people come to watch the performance of the preacher. It's not a drugstore offering aspirin as a remedy for the cancer of sin. It's not an ice house where people come to give one another the cold shoulders. But the church is a lumber yard where people can secure can secure the supplies they need to build new and better lives. Yeah. The church is a gas station where Christians can pull in and refuel their soul yeah. for the journey ahead. Yeah. The yeah. church, my friend, yeah. you need to know, yeah. is a florist shop. Yeah. It's a place where it displays the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Yeah. You need to be thankful to God that he got up, got up. that morning, early oh, that morning, because when he got up, yeah. he established the church that we are members of today. And he stayed up on this earth for some 40 days after he got up. And then when he went back to heaven 10 days later, he set up the church in the city of Jerusalem. Yeah. And the Bible said about 3,000 people obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and became members of that church. Yes, sir. We are living at a time today where it's not kosher mm. to say Church of Christ. Oh. You know, that run folk off. Folk don't want to hear you talking about the Church of Christ. You know, we found sophisticated names for everything. You know, people used to steal, but now they embezzle. Uh, they used to commit fornication, but now they have intercourse. You know, we found these sophisticated names for what the Bible teach that is contrary to sound doctrine. I still believe that 2,000 years ago, before Jesus ever went to the cross, when he came in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, say, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed are you, Simon, bar Jonah, flesh and blood, had not revealed this unto you but my father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, our confession, I will be on my church. And the reason I believe that he said it was a confession, because 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 4 talks about the rock that followed them that was in the land of Zen when they were marching in the wilderness. And he said that rock that followed them was Christ. And so Christ is the solid rock of our salvation. And he said, because of this confession, I will be on my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail or prevent me from building it. And Christ built the church and put 12 full-grown men in the church, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28, he set the apostle first in the church. Everybody else had to come to a process of baptism. Now, let me, let me do this. 
in, in two minutes, let me do this. We all are going to die. Yeah. But when we die, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, the Bible said it's appointed unto all men once to die. After this comes the judgment. You need to know there is more than one judgment. Yeah. Now, Lord, why am I being judged at death? It has to be determined where your spirit and soul is going to go and wait the final resurrection. Uh -huh. Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto me once to die. But after this. After this comes the judgment. Now the judgment here is to determine where your spirit and soul is going to go and wait for the final resurrection. How do you know this, Brother Hardaway? There's an example in Luke 16. Two men lived and two men died. One was a rich man, and the other one was a poor beggar. And the Bible says that in Hades, or hell, the rich man lifted up his eye, seeing Lazarus afar off in Abraham's bosom, which is a metaphor for paradise, and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus. So there are two places in the Hadean reign. And in that Hadean realm, you have Tartarus, which is a temporary place of torment. And you have paradise, which is a place of rest for the righteous. And so when you die, mm -hmm. you are till your spirit and soul is judged at death yeah. to determine whether or not your spirit goes to paradise or whether or not it goes to Tartarus. Uh -huh. Because one of these old days. One of these old days. When Jesus yes, sir. decides to mount up with the angels of heaven uh -huh. and come back to earth, well, he's going to stop off in paradise. Well, and he's going to pick up those that have died righteous in him. And the Bible said they that are asleep in Christ are going to get up and be with the Lord forevermore. And you need to know this morning that if you're not a child of God, well, you need to know that God is going to come with the angels of heaven, yeah. taking vengeance on them that know not God, yeah. and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, right. who shall be punished with everlasting destruction uh -huh. from the presence of the Lord. Yeah. But if you're in Christ Jesus, well, you can be assured that when the Lord comes again, yeah. you will hear him say, Come, be blessed are you. Inherit the kingdom of paraphernalia, says before the foundation of the world. If you're not a child of God, you need to become a child of God this morning. It's simple to become a child of God. All you need to do is sit right where you are and make up in your mind that I'm going to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to obey the command that the Bible teach in the word of God. I'm going to uh, 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 obey the commands and I'm going to believe the facts. What are the facts? The facts is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ died. He was buried. But early on Sunday morning, early. before the roosters could crow, before the dew drops could fall from the petals of a lily, early. Jesus got up from the grave. Yeah. Said, oh, grave, uh, where is your victory? Oh, death, uh, where is your stain? I'm he that was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And you need to make up in your mind that if you one day want to see God's face in peace, yeah. you got to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, you got to believe it to be the truth and be willing to repent of your sin yeah. and confess Christ and then go down in the watery grave of baptism.
baptism because in baptism you need to know that a spiritual operation take place. God Christ and the Holy Spirit is going to meet you in baptism and perform a spiritual surgery on you and you're going to rise from the watery grave of baptism a new creation in Christ. Paul said God be thanked that your words are servant of God but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free from sin. You become the servant of righteousness. You can become a child of God this morning. Old things pass away and behold all things will become new. I'm so glad that one of our old pioneer preachers said a long time ago that God had made some provision for I remember that K.K. Mitchell said on one occasion concerning God brought us healed that if a doctor had been up there, he would have said that Jesus hanging on the cross, that this first is aching hard. He said if a neurosurgeon had been up there, he would have said this is a reversal, psychological explosion. But my Bible tells me in Isaiah 53 that if Isaiah had been there, he would have said this man was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our iniquity. And though they put him in the grave, the grave could not keep him. The Bible tells us that when Jesus died on that cross, that the veil of the temple was split in half. And many that were dead got up and walked the streets among the living. And you need to know that because Christ died and got up, you can die yeah. get up. and get up. Yeah. If you're here this morning, yes. you're here this morning, yes, sir. Christ is calling. Right now. Right now. Yes, sir. And he's saying to you, come. Because I live, you can live. And you can face tomorrow. Yes. Somebody in here this morning needs to come yes. and say, Lord, I need your help. 